Today on Healthline, we are experiencing one of the most widespread incidents of flu cases across the country, claiming dozens of lives. Fulton County is stocking the majority of its health centers with the flu vaccine. And the Grady Health System takes unprecedented steps to provide the vaccine. We will dispel some of the common myths about the flu vaccine. I'm Dr. Hogai Nasseri. That and more on this edition of Healthline. Stay with us. Welcome to this edition of Healthline. I'm Dr. Hogai Nasseri. Today, we're talking about a health issue that has become a health priority all across the United States. Yes, I'm referring to influenza, the flu, that has proven to be deadly this season. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has announced that this year's flu season is on track to equal or surpass that of 2014 through 15, when 34 million Americans got sick and 710,000 were hospitalized. So what has the Fulton County Board of Health done? The Board of Health has stocked six of its eight health centers with the flu vaccine, including these centers. The Adamsville Health Center, the College Park Health Center, the Center for Health and Rehabilitation on Boulevard, the Oak Hill Teen Clinic on Metropolitan Parkway, the Neighborhood Union Health Center in Vine City, and the North Fulton Regional Health Center in Alpharetta. So what is so different about this year's strain of flu? And who should and who should not get the flu vaccine? These are just a few of the questions that we're gonna be discussing with Dr. Gloria Beecher, the District Director of Nursing and Clinical Services for the Fulton County Board of Health. She's here with us today to answer some of those questions. Hi, Gloria. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, thank you for being here. So um, can you talk to us a little bit, first of all, about what is the flu and what are some of the symptoms we should watch out for? I know some people think anytime they have a cold or they vomit or they have a fever that they have the flu. Um, if we could help clear some of that up, that would be great. So the flu is a respiratory illness that's caused by a flu virus. Uh, some of the common symptoms are cold or runny nose, in most cases a fever, it could also be accompanied by vomiting or diarrhea in some cases, um, body aches, headaches, mm -hmm. and locally it, it can be termed, I've, I've heard clients describe it as feeling as if they've been run over by a truck. Oh, wow. Yes. So that's yeah. the flu and its symptoms in a nutshell. So a lot of body aches, fatigue. Lot, yeah, malaise. Okay. You know, inability to get out of the bed because you feel so bad. Okay, it hurts, it got hurts it. So much. Uh -huh. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Um, so, if I got the flu shot last year, so let's say I got the flu shot in February of seventeen, why do I need to get another one now? So it's important that you get another flu shot every flu season, for a few reasons. The primary reason is that the flu shot that um, you got last year, your body might have the in antibiotics that you developed might have declined over the years, mm -hmm. and so you need another one. Also, there are times when the vaccine that is current for the season might cover a broader range of the viruses than previous vaccines. And so we encourage you that although you've had flu shots over the years, it's important to get one every year. Because the virus changes. The virus changes. Too. Got it, mm -hmm. got it. Yeah, unfortunately it does. Right? It does. Um, so yeah. if I get vaccinated, am I guaranteed that I will not get the flu? If I get that flu shot, can I just rest easy that I'm not going to get the flu? Unfortunately, there are some times when you might still get the flu, although you might have been vaccinated. Um, it's important to note that the flu vaccine takes maybe two, mo two weeks to be effective once you've had it. And so you might have contracted the, the, the virus prior to getting the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And so you would still get sick because you, you're, you got it outside of that window of protection. Also, as I mentioned earlier, that you might still get sick from the vaccine mm -hmm. because of the match. It might not be the match for the flu vax. For example, there might be a new strain of, of flu virus. That's oh, out. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And so the composition of the flu vaccine might not be a match for the strand of, of virus that you, you got. And so you will still get the flu. So that brings me to my next question, mm -hmm. which I think concerns a lot of people. And they wonder, is there even any point in getting the flu shot? Because there have been reports out there that it's only 10% effective this year. Could you speak to that? Do you think that's true? And if so, why should I still get a flu shot? So the 10% effectiveness came out of a study that was done in Australia. Okay. It's not, it's not for the United States flu vaccine. And even at that, that data was, was a predictive data to see how effective the, the flu vaccine was in that population. Mm -hmm. So it is still important to get the vaccine here. We have not yet, per CDC, determined the effectiveness of, of the flu vaccine because it's very difficult to predict what virus will be present every, right. every year. And so it becomes very challenging to, to target the, the vaccines with the, uh, the virus because mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to come out in, in terms of the virus. And so it's, it's very important that we get the flu shot because even if you got the flu shot and got the flu, the fact that you got the flu shot decreases the severity of the illness where you to get the flu. It lasts for a shorter period and it's mm -hmm. maybe a milder form you'll get. That makes a lot of sense to me because I know there have been years where I have had the flu shot and I could have sworn I had the flu later, mm -hmm. but it didn't seem to last as long. Exactly. And lay me out for as long as it would have otherwise. Exactly. So that flu vaccine did help to, mm -hmm. to reduce the severity of, of your, your, the flu that you got. So I know in jobs that I've had as a physician, we've always been told we need the flu shot. Who are some other groups that are considered more susceptible to the flu or that we really, really want to encourage to find a way to get the flu shot? And you're correct. We do encourage caregivers to get the flu, protect yourself so you protect those you care for. But there are categories of, of others who are taking the flu or are, are recommended to have the flu shot for their own good. Mm -hmm. um, young children, the flu shot is recommended for six months and older right. because they're, they're young. The immune, um, their immune system might not be as developed to, to, to ward off, to fight mm -hmm. the, the infection, and so it's recommended for them. Pregnant, or those who might become pregnant during the flu season, we encourage that population to, to get a flu vaccine for the sake of protecting themselves and the unborn child. Mm -hmm. The very old seniors above 65, that's a must do group that we recommend as well. And those who might have some kind of compromised immune system okay. or some chronic illnesses, we recommend the flu vaccine for those. So the flu vaccine is safe in pregnancy? It is safe in pregnancy Good. and highly recommended in right. pregnancy. One of the things that I find concerning is a lot of um, OBGYN offices may not be stocking it. Mm -hmm. So even though their patients should get it, their patients may have to go elsewhere to get it, mm -hmm. in which case they can certainly come into one of our Board of Health sites or um, try to find a CVS or somewhere or Walgreens where they could get the flu shot so that Absolutely. it's easy for them to access. Absolutely. We have the flu shot stocked in our six um, community-based um, clinics mm -hmm. where anyone can go to get a flu vaccine. Right, mm -hmm. good. And can you tell me, so um, if I think I have signs and symptoms of the flu, but I'm one of these driven people who feels like I've got to get to work or stuff is not going to get done, what would you say to me? as a, Dr. Beecher, you, if you're standing over my bed, what would you say to me to convince me to stay home? It's very noble of you that you want to work under every circumstances regardless of. But let's think of others. If you are sick, stay home. Because the, the good you're trying to do might have more ill effects than, than staying home. So because it's so highly infectious, you know, you can pass it on, mm -hmm. unintentionally even. And even in, in, in thinking that you're doing your, your clients and others a favor by showing up for work, you're actually not doing them a favor. So right. we advise you, the moment you begin to have those symptoms and you suspect you might be having the flu, please stay home. That is great advice. Thank you. And thank you for being our guest today, um, Dr. Beecher. It's, it's a pleasure to hear from you, someone who has um, firsthand experience with dealing with these issues 
and helping to make sure that the residents of Fulton County get vaccinated and stay healthy this flu season. Thank you, it was a pleasure to be here. So when we come back, um, we're gonna look at the steps that the Grady Health System is taking to offer the flu vaccine to its very high volume of patients. So please stay with us. Welcome back to Healthline. Our partners at the Grady Health System report that like other hospitals across the region and nation, Grady's experiencing very high patient volumes this flu season. They've taken some interesting and new initiatives to help address the historically high patient volumes. Dr. Haney Atala, the Chief of Emergency Medicine, has been dealing with this epidemic firsthand at Grady. Welcome to Healthline, Dr. Atala. Thanks for having me on the show. So can you tell us what Grady has seen in terms of patients during this flu season? I mean, just kind of describe what you've been experiencing this year. So we have seen a pretty remarkable uh, increase in the number of flu patients this season. Uh, we've had two days over 500 visits to our emergency department. One day we had 538 and another day 502. Uh, in addition to that, the flu plus the flu-like illnesses with things like uh, colds, coughs, runny noses, and other viral illnesses, as well as visits due to the extremes in temperature with things like frostbite and sometimes life-threatening hypothermia or extremely low body temperatures have really contributed quite a bit to our volume. Okay, so how has Grady responded to the epidemic? Um, what kind of uh, interventions or actions have they taken? So we had a long conversation about what we felt our patients needed and deserved in terms of uh, being able to take care of our increased volumes to the emergency department. Uh, we're not in a new, unique situation uh, and that hospitals all over the country are struggling to deal with the flu. Um, we had a conversation with our senior hospital administration. We discussed the idea of having a tent to take care of patients. However, we have a saying that if we're not gonna do it for our own families, then we won't do it for our patients. So we really, I think, are innovative and in looking around for other solutions. And we partnered with the folks from Carolina's Med One. Med One stands for Mobile Emergency Department. We brought in their resource to use. It's been a huge success for us. It's allowed us to manage our waiting room and some of the lower acuity patients much more effectively. Uh, and, and as a result, we're able to see patients more quickly and take care of everyone who shows up to our emergency department. So I think those are some of the things that we've done. We've also made sure we've restricted access to the hospital for those who are 14 and younger so as to keep them healthy and to keep some of our inpatients from getting sick. Uh, we're looking at other ways, uh, innovative ways, to really try and find ways to manage our increasing inpatient volume as well. And so it's all hands on deck um, to really try and help manage this year's flu season. I think everyone's really gone above and beyond. The staff have been terrific. Um, we've offered up in increased number of shifts uh, for both nurses and physicians. Um, and it's really amazing how people have sort of stepped up to try to help manage this, this volume that we've been having. So, Dr. Tala, why do we think the flu has been so deadly this year? Uh, you know, I think that's really the million dollar question. I think uh, a lot of patients have struggled with flu this year. I know that our, our vaccine that uh, was introduced nationally hasn't been a great match. Um, we still encourage everyone to get the flu shot. Uh, you know, one of the other things that we've done in our, our emergency department is to offer the flu shot to patients who come to our emergency department. So if they haven't gotten the flu shot yet, you know, we're, we're encouraging them to get it and we're giving it to them. Um, you know, I think that that's part of it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times no telling if it's gonna be a light flu season or a hard flu season. This season has just been, uh, you know, quite a bit more, more deadly to be honest, especially for the, you know, the old, uh, the young and those with chronic illnesses. Um, so, you know, the one thing I would say is, you know, uh, prevention is the key. Um, so make sure that you're keeping your hands clean, you know, cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. Um, you know, keep your children safe in particular, as well as your older family members and those with chronic illnesses. Um, and just being generally healthy and, and being cautious about hand washing and things like that is really gonna help prevent the flu. That's the primary thing I think people need to remember. Um, don't go visit people in the hospital if you don't have to. There's sick people in the hospital. 
and, and you're bound to get sick if you do that. So um, using some common sense, making sure you wash your hands, cover your mouth and nose if you cough or sneeze, those are the key things to, to making sure that you don't get sick. Um, you know, as far as again why, why it's so deadly this year, it's really hard to say, but this particular virus has been, you know, pretty potent and uh, causing a lot of people to get very ill. Great. And uh, any final thoughts for us before we let you go? Well, I, I think, um, you know, uh, again, I think making sure that you uh, try and keep yourself healthy. Um, make sure you got the flu. It's not too late to get the flu shot. This flu is likely to continue for several more months. So make sure that if you can, you go get the flu shot. Um, uh, don't go to the hospital unless you really need to. So if you're 18 to 50 years old, otherwise pretty healthy, and you come down with the flu, you know, the main bit of treatment is gonna be supportive. So uh, medication to help break the fever, help with the body aches, stay home, stay in bed, don't try and go out or go to work, uh, go to restaurants or the store. Um, and if you, don't, if you don't need to come to the hospital, then, then uh, by all means just stay home. If you're sick and you think you have an emergency and it's pretty bad, we're here for you and we're happy to see you 24 hours a day. Um, but just, you know, exercising uh, good judgment about, um, you know, uh, pre prevention and getting the flu shot, those are the key things um, to, to making yourself stay healthy. So Dr. Atala, thank you for your time um, today and for your service to the people of Fulton County. Thanks for having me on the show. And we'll be right back, stay with us. Welcome back. So typically, we doctors recommend that on or before the flu season starts, you get the flu shot. So in other words, you should get the flu shot beginning in September or actually whenever the vaccine first becomes available. And flu season can go as long as the month of May. We really don't know until we see how things move on in the spring. This year, only injectable flu shots should be taken in the standard dose for most people ages six months and older. And we wanna remind everyone again about who should get the flu shot. So anyone six months of age or older, pregnant women may receive any licensed, recommended, and age-appropriate flu shot, and we strongly recommend that. And then there's a high-dose shot made with an adjuvant that are recommended for people 65 or older. Before we go, we want to again give you the locations and hours for the six Fulton County Board of Health Centers that have the vaccine. And of course, the vaccine will be available as long as we have it in stock and we don't anticipate any shortage. But please call the location that you plan on visiting to make sure of the hours and just to make sure that the stock is available that day. So that's all of our time. We'd like to thank all our guests for joining us today, and we'd like to thank you for watching and remind you to get your flu shot. I'm Dr. Hogai Nasri, and we'll see you next time on Healthline.